Much of my work bounces between commercial editorial fashion and street. But the one thread that really ties them together is portraits, portraits of humans. So whether it's in the studio or someone halfway across the world, I am genuinely excited about capturing great portrait work. And over the months and years of this journey and bumping into other creatives, inevitably I get questioned about three unique things. So in this video, I'm going to provide a little bit more context, a little bit more guidance with respect to the three things that I think you should consider when thinking about portrait photography. Cameras. What's the camera? What's the camera that I should use? And even by extension of that, the lenses. Let me say this, most cameras are better than most photographers. Pretty much any modern camera on the market in the hands of a good photographer will create a good image. So when you're looking at what camera should I get or what camera should I rent, really look at what you value most. Is it having the most megapixels or the most dynamic range in your file? Is it having something that feels nice in the hand so that if you're capturing in a dynamic way, it just feels easy to use? Is it something that gives you access to very unique or even vintage lenses? Instead of chasing all the specs, what I will say with respect to cameras, look at what's important to you. With respect to my work, Resolution and dynamic range are relatively important, and that's how I base my decisions at this time. However, when I was just getting started, this is not something that I really cared about. I wanted something that just gave me good enough colors that I can go back and edit and really add my flavor to. So with that in mind, really look at where you are in your creative journey when you're making a decision and focus on the things that is really gonna help you further yourself in that creative journey. The conversations about megapixels, full frame versus APS-C, all these things, you can mitigate them by technique. So with respect to cameras, either buy the one that you can afford comfortably rent the one that you aspire to have, but don't make this too complicated of an issue. Really focus in on the two or three things that are important to your creative vision and then move on. Move on so you can get on to creating. The next item that most people ask about is lighting and lighting recipes. Look, it's great to be a natural light photographer, but don't let that stop you from working with artificial light sources and especially off-camera flash. So when you're looking to get started, Godox seems to be the best place, the most accessible place when you're looking to light your photographs. It gives you an opportunity to play with different kinds of lights, both on camera and off, so you can experiment and see what you're trying to do. I won't go too deep into lighting recipes because we have a video that we made in the past and I'll leave a link in the description. But when you're thinking about lights, take a step back and look at the images that inspire you. And from there, start looking at where the light sources are and how you could replicate that. Some things to keep in mind is that if you look at the light on a subject, do you want it to have this soft and more angelic look or do you want something with hard cut shadows? Having a light source close to your subject is gonna give you that diffuse, soft light. If you have something that's further away and doesn't have a soft box on it or any kind of light modifier, well, that's gonna give you much harder light, much more of this contoured look. So look at images that inspire you and then work backwards to understand where was the light angled and what kind of characteristics does this light source provide? Admittedly, talking about lighting, while well, this deserves its own masterclass, it's hard to summarize, but what I will tell you as guiding advice is look at images that inspire you and work backwards from there. Look at how strong the light is with respect to the shadows and really try to understand how you can replicate this in the process. I will also say, and this is a plug here, a shameless plug, if you're thinking about which light sources are right for you for where you are in your creative journey, check out the live chat on henrys.com where you could talk to a professional during business hours. You can engage with these professionals to find out which tools are gonna be great for the work that you're looking to create. The last item that I'm gonna talk about that rounds out this list of top three things I get asked about when it comes to portrait photography is posing. 
posing. How should I pose the models? Well, look, when you're working with a more professional model, this will become much more easier. When you're working with someone that's a little bit more junior, you're gonna have to do more coaching. So investing here is something valuable because it could make your work easier on set. But quite simply, look at the magazines, look at the publications that have images that you find inspiring and look to curate these poses into your own shot list and mood board so that it can serve as inspiration for the work that you're looking to capture. When you know what you think is good, well, you can go ahead and try to replicate that. I should also say that you should understand the limitations of your subject. Not every person off the street is gonna be able to execute these extravagant poses that you might see in Vogue, Vanity Fair, or Harper's Bazaar. So really understand how much of that gap is going to exist between your vision and what you can actually create. Another item to consider with respect to posing is really take the time to scan your subject on set. When I am on set and I'm looking at my subject, I am looking at them top to bottom. I'm looking at where their hands are, where their wrists are, their elbows, their shoulders, how it's angled. I'm looking to see is there anything that might seem unflattering. The attention to detail here makes all the difference. I wanna make sure that there's good separation between the fingers so there isn't this penguin hand situation happening. I wanna make sure that maybe their bicep and their elbow is not tucked in too far so it looks like a blob almost when the image is captured on camera, that you have a little bit of breathing room between the outfit and the model's limbs. All the attention to detail here will make the difference. So when it comes to posing, and this itself could also be a full-on masterclass, just look at all the details. Scan your subject top to bottom and really be critical of where each piece of this human is oriented. And there you have it, those are the three items that I get asked about the most with respect to portrait photography. So let me know what you think, and more importantly, is there something within these three that you want to know? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, my name's Gadjin. thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.